Hi everyone, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be talking with Magic Logics and talking about different approaches to developing Drupal websites. Just a little bit about us, the Drupal Association. Um, we, are in, we are charged with helping Drupal.org improvements. We host Drupal.org. We also host a little conference called DrupalCon. Uh, we have one in North America and we have one in Europe each year. And then this year we're really excited we have one in Latin America coming up. We also give community cultivation grants to uh, Drupal communities that are building their uh, Drupal community and, and need help with any sort of uh, project they're working on, meetups, or um, a Drupal camp. And then we also have a really cool program called Global Training Days. The next one is coming up at the end of August. This is an opportunity for our training companies to really highlight their skills, invite new uh, Drupal developers to learn about um, just the basics of Drupal and, and grow the community in their specific area. So we're really excited about this program and you can find out more information on our website about that. Next slide, please. Great, just some upcoming events that we have. Um, we have DrupalCon Amsterdam coming up at the end of September, and uh, that'll be um, a really great event held in Europe. We're expecting 2,000 attendees, great keynotes, and some really fantastic sessions. Like I said earlier, we have Drupal Global Training Days, and um, you can learn more about that on our site. The link is right there. And then our next webinar is going to be on August 5th, and we're talking about our community elections. So definitely something you don't want to miss. Next slide. Great. And just a quick shout out. Thank you so much for our uh, supporting partners. Uh, Magic Logics has been with us, and they're a supporting partner. And we really couldn't do what we do uh, without the support of some of these great companies and, and really helping us foster the program, grow the community, and uh, you know provide educational resources for you guys. So thank you so much. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Sam and Chris from Magic Logics. They're going to be talking today um, about our uh, everyday applications and implementation tips. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Apoliski. I'm a social media director and one of our marketing managers here at Magic Logics. And I'm joined by Sam Timelstein over here. Uh, hello, world. <laughs> Sam is one of our senior web developers uh, and is by far one of the best people that I can think of to do this webinar with. So we're really excited to kind of get going and talk with you guys this morning. I'm excited, too. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you a little bit, just a quick rundown about Magic Logics, who we are, what we do. Uh, we're an integrated marketing agency, and as Lauren mentioned, we're also a Drupal Association supporting partner. So as far as integrated marketing goes, I like to look at kind of four big areas of web design, web development, search engine, and social marketing or social mar or <laughs> social media marketing. Uh, however, we also do marketing automation and e-commerce services as well. Um, we create a lot of responsive websites and use a lot of Drupal, and we're out here in Dallas, Texas, the wonderful state of Texas. We've been active since 2004, so just about a decade now. Um, as far as this webinar goes, we plan to kind of look at a lot of projects we've worked on and give you guys some insight on different Drupal projects. So we've basically locked it down to different approaches in development. There's an easy way to Drupal development, and kind of a more advanced approach. So what we're going to do is kind of go through both those methods, see what we would quantify as the easy way, and then also look at a maybe a more advanced approach and see how both of these can uh, provide insight into building your own websites for Drupal. Uh, we're also going to look at three different examples, challenges, and solutions for other web projects. So we quantify these into a smaller website, a medium website, and a large scale project. So this way we actually give you specific examples, and that's where Sam takes a look into the coding and all the wonderful, wonderful things that he does in that realm that I will never comprehend myself. <laughs> so we're going to look at also how to approach each type of project, and then we've also got a little section talking about a modern workflow for Drupal development. So without further ado, I'm going to get Sam in here on the easy way of Drupal development to start this discussion. 
uh, thanks, Chris. So uh, at the start, I would, I would like to uh, start off by saying uh, I'm not a Drupal expert, but <laughs> I'm getting there. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is a list of uh, slides uh, we've prepared, uh, and uh, it's the uh, you know result of some years of experience using Drupal. And uh, so let's start by uh, talking about the easy way of uh, Drupal development. So once you set up, once you install Drupal, by default, Drupal uh, gives you, you know, some core modules. And by itself, Drupal is a very strong CMS. I would say it's one of the best CMS open source. So the first thing that you do you know, when you want to, you know, develop Drupal in an easy way, the first thing that you do is install a theme. You can start off by using base themes like uh, the Gen theme, the Bootstrap. There are plenty of themes out there, and uh, I think you can also buy a lot of uh, themes out there in the marketplace. Is there any favorite theme of yours, or? Well, uh, I use Bootstrap and Foundation a lot, but they are base themes, okay. and we'll we'll talk about that later on. And the next thing that you do is, um, well, I forgot to mention you always plan ahead your website before you even start. So uh, I'm assuming you already done that. So once you have your theme installed, and the next thing that you do is install modules. And the good thing about Drupal is you have an endless list of uh, you know modules uh, built by the community. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can there are modules you can. Uh, you know, install for any purposes. Do you want uh, to include a YouTube video, uh, Vimeo? You know, do you want your uh, site to be social? You know, there are modules for anything they want. Well, that's the thing about Drupal. There's a module for for everything. Uh, do you want SEO, social sharing, YouTube, e-commerce? There are really great e-commerce, you know, uh, modules, and we'll we'll talk about that later on, but. Uh, we have something called the uh, uh, um, well, well, we'll talk about that later on. But uh, we have uh, we have basically modules for everything that you want in a website. So a uh, modern website will will need uh, these basic things. You know, uh, social is very important right now. SEO is very important. You know, media is very important. So you have modules for everything in Drupal. So in, in the easy way, you you install, you find your module in Drupal.org, you know, and uh, uh, install your module for your site. Yes, this was a, what I was talking about. Sometimes you forget what you're trying to say, right? right? <laughs> Drupal distributions. I'm sorry. Um, so we have full featured Drupal distributions created for specific types of sites. Okay. Uh, and uh, the commerce kit store is really really big. And uh, this is for people who want to, you know, jumpstart their e-commerce website, and uh, they can get ready. Well, let me talk about Drupal distributions a bit. Uh, it's uh, it's a set of modules and uh, you know profiles that that's ready to you know for a type of website. There are, there are so many different kinds of websites. For example, we build, we build sites that are for you know uh, education purposes. We build sites for you know charity, those kind of stuff. You know, so we have Commerce Kickstore, we have Open Publish, uh, Open Office, Open Folio. There's a lot of uh, Drupal distributions, and uh, not all of them are published in Drupal org. I mean, we are also de developing a distribution for our own purposes, mm -hmm. right? So um, you can you can either uh, you know uh, install vanilla Drupal and install you know, whatever modules you need as you go, or you can uh, get a head start using a Drupal distribution. Okay. So what's your basic approach then? Uh, we'll get, that, get to that in a moment. Okay. So <clears throat> here's the basic approach. Um, uh, you first install your Drupal, uh, that's the vanilla Drupal, without any modules, you know, just uh, download it from Drupal.org, mm -hmm. or you install a Drupal distribution. Uh, the next thing that you do is uh, install a theme. It doesn't have to be necessarily this, but if I was starting a very basic uh, website, then I would, um, uh, I would do it this way. And uh, you set up 
and configure your modules, you know, and your theme. Uh, and the next thing that you do is create your content types. And the content types are really, really important. Uh, they are basically uh, different types of uh, data that you have on your website, be it articles, blog, uh, team members, anything you can think of uh, in a set of data. And the last thing that you do is add data. Well, this is just one approach, you know, a very basic approach. Uh, you don't have to follow it, but uh, this is one way to do it. And this is this is uh, typically very enough for small websites. Um, but there are trade-offs using the easy way. You know, uh, if you are a developer and uh, uh, you you looked at you know uh, the markup that uh, Drupal produces, that's that's one of the trade-offs of using uh, Drupal. Uh, out of the box, uh, without any overrides. You see a lot of markup. You see a lot of CSSs. Uh, and when you look at the uh, markup that is produce, produced, you see a lot of elaborate class names. You know, uh, but they are there for a reason because they help you uh, style your websites and uh, uh, and and uh, without having to create your own class names. And adding class names is really uh, really difficult if you do not know how to add class names to to your uh, components. And they, like I said, they add a lot of CSS and JavaScript. And uh, the more the CSS and JavaScript that you have on a website, the slower your, slower your site's uh, going to be. So those are the trade-offs of using the. This, those are just two of the trade-offs of using the Drupal in, in in the easy way. And. Uh, yeah, it's really difficult to change uh, anything. Uh, if, if the model that you just downloaded and using does not have the exact same feature that you need, uh, meaning say you have, you, you want to have social, uh, there are modules for doing that. Uh, there are modules like share this, add this. And when you do that, uh, it may not exactly you know, work the same, way that, the same way that you need it to work. Like you can have a module that embeds a YouTube video, but you want that module to, uh, uh, you know, do something before it, you know, renders the YouTube video. Maybe you want uh, the how long the YouTube video plays. For example, it's five second, five minutes and some some seconds. And you want to show that it the module that you install does not do that. So it's it's really difficult to change something, you know, if the module does not. Uh, uh, Support that. So that's one of the trade-offs, and uh, and the the most important trade-off. I mean, is that if you're using uh, uh, modules uh, for for uh, I mean, you always use modules, but because there are so many modules, uh, in in the easy way, you do everything uh, by using modules. Then there's a chance you're gonna break your site if. Some some module breaks, and we see a lot of that problems uh, when when clients come to us and they say, "Well, my site is broken," and it's it's sometimes it's because of a simple module that's not working, that's not updated. So uh, there you have it. Those are the trade-offs of uh, the easy way of Drupal development. All right, so. Kind of looking at the easy way then before we get into what's the hard way, which is really more of an advanced way. Um, that's with the easy way you're discussing is good for SMBs. Can you would you use that for large scale client or no? Uh, no, I would not. Okay, um, it's at least good for setup then. And then of course the hard way. Let's get into this. Um, even though we've got the little frowny face Drupal guy, it's really not kind of as hard as you would you would think in that sense. Do you mean it more of an advanced? I, I, way? I, I, I would like to, to think of this guy as determined and not angry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. He's he's ready to get it out there. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Well, it's not really the hard. Um, it might be a misnomer. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's the advanced way. It's the I think it's the right way of doing Drupal. Uh, and but it requires you know some knowledge of uh, Drupal, the underlying technology, the the APIs, mm -hmm. how Drupal works. You know. Uh, Nodes and uh, entities, you know, those kind of stuff. Users, so you need to, you need to really understand uh, the underlying technology to do Drupal the right way. 
So we're going to get more into customization then next. With that's that's right. correct. It's all about customization. Okay. And uh, and it is it is uh, uh, it has been easy to do the hard way because Drupal has a very solid API. Right. You know, uh, it has a great community and there's a lot of lot of active uh, members. Uh, um, we have you know who who selflessly uh, promote Drupal and uh, you know give to the community. So that's the that's the good thing about Drupal is you can customize it because it has it has such a great platform. Take it away, man. Okay. So what exactly is the hard way? It's 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 like uh, Drupal already out of the box does some things very good. Uh, you know you can create content types that out of the box in Drupal seven. Uh, and uh, but it does not well when you create a note a content type I'm I'm getting into more technical uh, you know I'm getting more technical here mm -hmm. but uh, I think uh, uh, this is necessary because we're we're talking about the hard way when you when you create a content type by default it produces it renders a markup that may uh, may not necessarily be what you what you need you know. Uh, and you may have content types, you know, uh, a layout, uh, a theme that, uh, you know, uh, is is very customized for your website. Uh, and to do that may not be possible using, you know, the default Drupal rendering. So it allows you that the hard way is actually building custom themes to look exactly the way you want, exactly what your designer gives you. So that's the hard way. And to do that, you either build custom modules to exactly match your requirements. By custom modules, we're not talking about reinventing the wheel. That's very important. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. So if there are modules out there that do those things very good, and those are you know used by thousands of websites that are well documented, that are well maintained, that uh, Produce you know uh, bug patches that have security updates, very regular sec security updates, and you must use those kind of modules. But I'm, I'm talking about uh, building custom modules for your requirements. And for websites that we've built, we've always had to build some modules. So that's the thing. Uh, so the 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 advanced way of uh, using Drupal is you built your custom modules for your requirements. So that's one thing. And build, build custom behavior that d otherwise doesn't exist in Drupal. So it might be, you know, um, uh, something that Drupal doesn't do by default. Uh, for example, you want to have, you know, when someone uh, updates a content type, you know, uh, for a particular role, an email is sent out, you know, uh, there, there was one project what we did was uh, it was called the system status page and you could subscribe to that page it was so when something changed uh, then anyone subscribed to that page would get get uh, emailed you know um, um, I think uh, there, there, there could be a module that existed I did not look for that module well I think I tried but uh, we ended up building our own module for that one so uh, custom behavior that's that's the uh, that's another thing that makes it the hard way so here are some rules to understand uh, when you are uh, thinking about uh, building a website the the advanced way use only production ready modules so how do you know some modules are production ready you need to look at the status of drupal modules when you when you when you go to a mod a project a module project, then you see whether it's not it is well maintained, whether it is in beta, whether it's in tape, whether it's production ready. You can see how many websites uh, are using it. You can see the uh, demography, you, and you can also see the bug reports. If there's a lot of bug reports, you may not want to use that. And you can al also find a list of modules that uh, are are useful to use in all projects. For example, views and display. So that those are the modules we always use. And the next important thing is use modules very sparingly. You do not want to use a lot of modules uh, for big sites. And there's some really good reasons for that one. Uh, 
and we'll talk about that later on. And uh, the important thing is, the next important thing is you plan your content types and fields ahead of time. And this is really important. This is, this is all planning. A great website is not only built by developers, you have to include uh, designers, marketers, uh, you have to include content writers. You want to you wanna learn what, as a developer, I always try to, you know, talk to uh, designers will end up using the website. That's really important. If you build a website that your, your admin who's, who's going to end up using the website doesn't understand how to use. And that's one thing uh, Drupal has, uh, you know, got some uh, things to, you know, uh, fix. And I think it's, 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 uh, it's going that direction now is uh, Drupal is not really, uh, you know, uh, user friendly in the back end. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something we hear a lot of times from clients, you know, we have to walk them through a lot of, you know, uh, menus because they're accustomed to using WordPress or, you know, um, a one click solution. And it's up to uh, we developers to make that easy for them, the transition. Uh, so that's, that's important. So, yeah, planning content types and fields ahead of time that lets you, you know, think. Um, and you can also, you know, get uh, get in touch with your your content writers and see if they can use it. Uh, that's really important. And uh, and this is one of the core requirements of uh, doing the uh, Drupal the hard way is you write your own templates for pages, for nodes, for blogs, for views, because Drupal allows that. You know, you can you can you can theme your node per content type. You can uh, you can target views. You can target blocks, and that's this is this is something I'll I'll talk about in detail uh, in a minute. All right. Well, then looking at the hardware of Drupal development or the more advanced way, obviously customization is really really clutch. Uh, just kind of in summation of that, which is which is really really good, and that's kind of a nice way to add your own spin and taste on it. Uh, you know, obviously, if we're looking into choosing your approach, big factors are going to be time and your level of comfort. I think like a very, very high level of comfort, or at least moderate, would say, be approach to doing so much customization, obviously. But then also to knowing what kind of scale um, site you're building at. So, you know, with, with that in mind, as we go here, we're going to talk a little bit about choosing your approach. We're going to look at a few tips, and then we're finally going to get in to give some of these real-life examples of what we've been talking about so you can see kind of using panels and different things that we've done for all approach. So um, I'll kind of let you take it from there regarding these next tips there, Sam. Yeah. So, well, uh, let me just um, uh, um, tell you this, the easy way and the you know, uh, the hard way is not just the two different approaches you can take. Uh, this is really important to understand. These are the two ends of the spectrum of uh, the, the, the things you can do. You can combine, you know, uh, you, can, you, can, you can do a lot of things and we'll show in the examples of sites we've done. Sometimes it's important to use a lot of modules uh, because you don't have the time you know, sometimes, mm, uh, you know, uh, there's budget constraint. Sometimes uh, uh, there could be a lot of factors in deciding uh, whether to use the easy way, the hard way, but often it's, it's the compromise, the easy way uh, and the hard way. There's, there's, all, there's hundreds of, you know, uh, lines between those two approaches. So, uh, the factors that you must consider whether or not to devote a lot of time customizing Drupal is, well, how much time you have for the project. If it's if it has to be submitted, you know, uh, has to be production ready in a certain amount of time, and you know that customizing Drupal to exact specification could take you more more than that time. I mean, uh, if you plan it ahead of time, you could always, you know, uh, uh, come to a a compromise, but uh, so the time that you need and the level of comfort, uh, meaning uh, how much level of uh, confidence you have using a certain part of Drupal, uh, templating a certain part of Drupal, whether you are, uh, so you have to you have to consider how much time you want to devote, you know, and how much 
uh, proficient you are in Drupal uh, before you decide uh, what approach to take. So I always recommend a compromise uh, if you have limited time and limited comfort using Drupal. And here are some tips uh, where, where we're talking about um, uh, if you have used Drupal a lot, you'll, you'll find using the same kinds of modules, the same types of content types a lot. So here's a tip. You create profiles for frequently used project types. And you could end up creating all your own distributions. Uh, or you could use uh, Drupal distributions for head start. Those are, some, those are two nice tips. And you can reuse a lot of uh, codes that you use uh, many times. Uh, I use GitHub guests, and I can insert them. Uh, I use uh, the template PHP file a lot because there are some functions that I use a lot. And it's, it's really easy for me to insert those uh, bit of snippets inside my code faster. So this is one, one thing I did do. And this is really important. You must follow the Drupal best practices. And getting back to installing less modules, this is, if you read the Drupal best practices, this is one of the recommendations. Use, use as less modules as possible. And, but you must remember, this is, this is a good tip. You, a customization is not always better. It is not update proof. So uh, if, you, if you update, if you hook to a module that updates and does not support that hook or, you know, it, it really happens, but you, you must consider it. it must, your customization must be update proof and you must also update your code. <clears throat> okay, so we'll, 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 we'll talk about, this is the range of, so going from small sites to large and enterprise sites, here's a, a bullet list of things that you must uh, think about. Uh, so modules and themes and testing production servers. Uh, in small sites, I, um, I mean, it's, it's recommended that you use uh, testing, staging, and production servers for all your projects. But um, in, in the real world, there are some, some developers that are stuck. In, in some countries, you're stuck with using you know, shared service servers uh, some people must develop uh, locally on the machines before they can up upload the final code uh, to the server. So per, for large and enterprise sites, I would not recommend that. But, uh, okay, let's start from, from the modules. It's, for small sites, it's more beneficial if you install uh, modules rather than, you know, uh, you know creating all, your own modules. Uh, you, you also might have to trade off, you know, functionality in small, really small sites. Uh, if you, if you do not want, uh, you, you rather have to, you know, modify your, uh, and this is, this is the sad part for, for modules, uh, some, some modules, uh, if you need, really need to, uh, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, so I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll stop right there. I know we have some, some limited time, so I'll, I'll speed up. Okay, um, and this is this is this is the this is the biggest uh, differences. Uh, I think the theming is the biggest differences, and I must I must talk about this. You can use uh, you can use panels, display shield, panelizer. There's so many different options you can use uh, to create uh, layouts for smaller sites, and it's much faster that way. But for large enterprise uh, sites, you have to overwrite your pages, notes, and blogs, and views. You know to get the exact specification. If you have looked at really nice sites, they have such beautiful layouts. And to do that, you know, you have to do some work. And, and a lot of people have done work on really great sites. So I'm, I'm gonna give you an example of a really small part of a website. And uh, take a look, it's it's the footer of a, it's, it's fairly complex. We have uh, two columns. On the right side, you have a logo and some some menu items. It's a footer menu. On the left side, we have a block, uh, and there's so many different ways you could do it. I'll show you some examples. So we can. There's a model out there uh, using panels. Uh, you can build if you are 
if you are in real hurry, you can build a custom layout. So remember we had two, uh, two columns and we want to build that. You can use uh, the uh, builder function in the, in, the, in the panels and you can create uh, using the layout designer. So I have created a reason left, footer right, and credit. So there, there was also a credit at the bottom. Um, this was created using the layout designer, no coding needed. And this is, this is really fast. Uh, it takes two minutes. And once you do that, you can start adding your content like this. So you have the, the blog, blog on the left, the site logo and the footer menu and the right hand side and the credit, we have a, a custom block. And this is fast. Okay. So once you have the footer uh, mini panel ready and you can start adding your, uh, your content using the blocks UI. Um, and I'll, I'll show you the markup that's generated using the mini panel. And this is, this is what's the difference. Uh, and I, I don't think you can, you can see each of this uh, uh, markup, but there's a lot of, lot of markup and uh, this is there for a reason, like I said previous. You use this markup, the, the panels uh, produce this markup so that you can style it. You can use the styles and uh, the, the classes and style them. There's a slightly better way. This is a one step further. You can create your own layout using for panels. Remember we use a custom uh, a layout uh, using the uh, designer function, uh, but there's another way you can create your own files. Uh, uh, it's, it's using the mini panel layout interface. I'm, I'm sorry, you use your own uh, layout and those are in code. Let me show you this example. So we are, we are uh, describing a layout and uh, if you want, we can, we can publish this uh, code uh, in our site later on for your use. This is just an example. So I'm describing uh, a layout that has three reasons, a footer left, a footer right, and credit. And this is described uh, in this PHP file. And here's the markup. This is the markup that you want. We do not want a lot of classes uh, because we are gonna style it like we need. So I'm using, uh, if you look at it, uh, and for those who know Bootstrap, you'll, you'll see that there's uh, Bootstrap classes here, container, row, uh, a six column, uh, and a six column, and a custom class. Uh, and this would have been real difficult using the uh, default uh, layout designer. And this is the markup we have. Uh, we'll just insert the content using a PHP. And this is the this is what you see. We can we can style it so that it looks uh, the footer left is actually on the left and footer right is actually in the right. But we're saving time here. And you use you add the content like you did like you always do in using panels. And here's the markup that is produced. So you see the markup is greatly reduced here. So it does not, it doesn't have, though it does have some uh, uh, classes that, uh, that is produced outside this, this uh, layout block, but still the, 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 um, the markup that is produced inside is much less now. Here's the, here's the uh, way I do it. If the footer is a really important reason I tend to create uh, its its own um, reasons in the theme info file. So the theme info file is where you create your uh, reasons uh, for using the website. And we use that to add content uh, using the blocks UI. And uh, on the front end, um, this is a part of the footer and uh, we're just uh, rendering using PHP 
the footer left, footer right, and the created reasons that we described in the the info file. So uh, this is this is one other way to do it, and it produces a little less markup. Um, okay. The the good thing about using a custom template is, uh, like I mentioned, just so an example, it produces less markup and uh, it doesn't rely on the panels module. So if you did not have panels module and if you're using panels module just for layout purposes and you do not have a complex functionality, you can get rid of the panels module and just use, using the uh, Drupal reasons and adding content from the blocks UI. So there you have it, you can get rid of one dependency. Uh, you cut away one dependency, and that's a good thing. In short, like less is always better. You can do similar things in other places. You can have custom templates, pages. Uh, you can you can you can theme certain pages differently than other pages. You do not have to rely on uh, the the page manager module. I'll, I'll also sideways give you examples here. Pages, you can either custom template or you can uh, use the page manager module. Uh, if you're doing it the easy way, you have to create different layouts for different pages, um, then you do the pages manager module. By default, blocks are rendered with their block IDs and some classes. You know, uh, you can, uh, if you, if you do not like seeing those classes, you do not like the markup, you can always change that, uh, override the blocks. And notes is really important, a lot of content, a lot of uh, pages that we have in Drupal, they're from notes, uh, and uh, you can, you can uh, override notes, you can, you can theme a node uh, using custom templates, or you can use a lot of different models uh, you can use something called panelize, Panelizer, and that lets you create uh, a fairly complex um, uh, layout and add different contents into the note page. Uh, but you can always do it, you know, uh, from 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 a template file. You can also uh, uh, Overwrite fields. So if you want a field uh, to render in a certain way, uh, you have to override that field. And there are a lot of modules um, that overwrite fields. One example is uh, uh, the UT module. Mm -hmm. um, you install that module, and uh, what it lets you do is it lets you either um, render on the front end the uh, the preview image or render the actual video, embed the video in an iframe. That's an example. That's what the module is doing right there. Uh, in, uh, in, in complex uh, big websites, there could be situations where you have to, you know, uh, uh, get the input in certain, sort of certain data and you have to output it in, uh, in a different way using that data and you overwrite that field. And you'd only be able to do that, you know, using a custom template. Or you can also you can also custom template forms. Uh, by default, what the form is rendering is much different than you want. Uh, your designer gives you, then you have to override the forms. And you can also override the views. You can override a lot of things in Drupal. Uh, you can override a lot of modules. If, if you want to really see, you can go to the views module, or you can go to the blocks module, and you can see they have their own templates, and you can copy them to your you, to your theme and you can start overriding them. They have very good uh, uh, documentation. So for customizing Drupal, what you need to learn is uh, use hooks. So hooks in Drupal provide functionality to you know, access uh, Drupal uh, objects or contributed modules and uh, uh, Um, I'm not really sure what, <laughs> excuse me. So 
for customizing Drupal, the other things you can uh, customize in Drupal is you can optimize views, you can you can set custom text formats. You know, uh, YouTube one was one example. So it it was a custom text format that had its own uh, you know output in the front end. You can also create your own types of custom uh, text formats. Uh, we have done that several times in our projects. So our uh, I'll give you one example. In a certain project, we had uh, uh, the the admin uh, insert a Marketo uh, form ID, and we use that Marketo form ID uh, to render a Marketo form on the front end. So this is one example of custom text format. Um, and uh, for big websites, you uh, when they have those kind of functionalities, you need to do that. And the other thing you can do uh, is customize your editor. Uh, it's really important. It's it's what the admin uses all the time, and you want to make that as friendly as possible. And we try uh, to make it look as if uh, you know, like the front end. I'll show you an example shortly. Uh, it's it's one of the examples that I have. So here are the examples of uh, three websites. I'll not i not call them uh, you know small, medium, or large websites. There are a combination of all those three. But um, let's get into it. So this is interwest.com. Um, this is a uh, website that we built in. I think 2011, in 2011, and this has a really nice uh, layout, a clean, clean layout, and uh, we use the page manager module a lot, and panels and views. Um, the way we did it was we used the page manager for layout. And uh, because this had a fairly complex uh, layout in different pages, uh, Page Manager allowed us to create those layout fast. Here's an example. Uh, it's one of the content type for partners. Uh, you can see a lot of things happening in, on this page. There's uh, a lot of blocks on the left hand side on the bottom. Uh, when you click on one of them, you get uh, more. So the, the news, the perspectives, and on the top right, you have uh, uh, the, the tabs going on. On the left-hand side, you have a menu. So this is a fairly complex layout. And we used uh, the page manager for doing this layout. So the, the the challenges we faced was there was an absurd amount of markup, uh, uh, and uh, we didn't really have granular control over the layout. Uh, you know, uh, it's not really great. The page manager is not really great. The complex layout. Um, so that's that's one of the biggest challenges we faced. But um, it did allow us to create those layouts, which is nice. Um, here's another example. It's it's uh, it's one of the recent sites with it, and uh, it's for uh, the Glorious Restaurant, which is really big in Texas. It has 15 locations. Uh, it's a nice website, and we use this module. We have tried to use as less modules as possible on this website. We used views, we used uh, the display suite, um, and some other small modules. Uh, the implementation was we used template files to overwrite all nodes, pages, blocks, waveforms, etc. And uh, we used the display suite for the view modes. Um, in, in Drupal, the view modes are different, uh, different modes of displaying the nodes. You can have the full display mode, you can have the teaser mode, you can have any other mode you want to describe. Uh, and the views used a display suite to render uh, notes. So here's just um, I, I think I, I I know this is really uh, granular, um, but you see a lot of what's happening here. 
Uh, we have uh, overrides for blocks, we have overrides for nodes, pages, uh, sometimes even specific nodes. Um, and on the right side, you see we're using display suite for rendering uh, in the views. This is a part of the view. We're not using any fields. And the markup that was produced was completely in control. Uh, so, so this is what we are aiming for. And here's some some screenshots of the website. And uh, the designer that produced was quite happy that we were able to reproduce. Uh, and uh, we are happy to, yeah. as developers, uh, with the level of uh, control we have. And sometimes when we had to, uh, you know, style a particular node differently, then it was really easy. And forms, and this is this is something that uh, we're proud about. Um, uh, forms, you know, they can have insane uh, layouts, and it's really easy using uh, overrides. Sam, I just want to uh, let and, you. Uh, Sam, I just want to let you know that we have ten minutes uh, yes. before we wrap up, and uh, that we want to take some questions and answers at the end. So, if you guys listening right now have any questions, please feel free to send me something in our uh, question box, and I'll make sure that we have time to do that. Thanks. Okay, um, I'll just breeze through this last uh, example. Uh, uh, just uh, want to show you. Um, this is um, a different, this is the uh, display suite we used uh, for different uh, view modes uh, and uh, some cu custom layouts that we used, um, the back end, and how it renders on the front end. Um, and this is the customization we do to the editor, and uh, we try to reflect what uh, the admin would see on the front end. So. This is what they see on the front end. I'm, I'm really sorry this is going real fast, but I wish we had more time. And uh, different, we use the panelizer model here for different uh, styles uh, or different layouts for any content type, if they had more than one content type. Um, well, in this model we used, uh, in this project we used panelizer because it lets let, let the client have more control. They didn't have to go to the code uh, but however, the uh, challenges was uh, the panelizer produces a lot of markup. Okay, th um, this is the um, end of uh, uh, the webinar. Uh, I would like to end this with uh, the modern workflow we use uh, in Magic Logics. Um, the tools that we use are Git for any project that we use. It's version control. Uh, we have Dross. Uh, that is the Drupal cell. Uh, if if any of you have not used Drupal Cell, please consider it. Uh, it's it's very handy. And uh, we have a local LAMP stack. Um, and the editor of our choice is Sublime Text. We also use Notepad plus plus. And uh, as developers, uh, our choice of modules is develop. We we cannot live without develop. Uh, we use features. Uh, and examples is really a good way of. Uh, getting into the Drupal API. Uh, there are other models, Thin Developer and Backup and Migrate. And the modern workflow is once you have your site ready, you have set up the Git, uh, you, you basically start by pulling up, pulling the code from the repository. Uh, you update your Drupal core and the modules. Uh, you make whatever changes you need to make locally. Uh, you test it and uh, you approve it, you push the code to the dev server, uh, and you test that also, test and approve, and finally, once everything is tested, you push the code to production. Uh, this is just one, one of our uh, workflows. Uh, there could be slight modification if you have more than one developer and you have a test server, uh, but uh, for any modern workflow, I'd recommend at least using Git, at least using Drus, and at least a staging or, or a developing server besides the production. 
Cool. Well, Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, I guess we'll see if Lauren has any questions. Um, as you can see, Sam will probably answer them. I'm kind of the color commentator, and he's the play-by-play -play guy. <laughs> so. <laughs> you guys are really yes. great. Thank you so much for your time. Um, it looks like we don't have any questions. I, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. Sam, where would you recommend to follow up on um, kind of where you started as an introduction, but where, where could you find some resources to really hone in on these skills? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I had the same question myself uh, a lot of times. Um, I basically started, uh, you know, uh, in Drupal.org itself. It's a lot of great material. Um, but as a de developer, you have to, you know, make mistakes and uh, learn from your past. You you get uh, you get better as you do uh, more projects. Right. And for actual, you know. Uh, Real great content. I, I follow a lot of good, great blogs um, uh, out there. A lot of companies doing Drupal, and we are really planning to start our own blogs fast. So uh, <laughs> you can look forward to getting great uh, content from Magic Logics that I can say. Perfect. Um, and uh, you know, other than next steps, is there anything really quickly you wanted to add to um, to our participants on? Uh, how to um, either explore any best tips or practices for, um, you know, Drupal, Drupal sites, and really how to get started with that. Uh, I, I do have one, one, one thing I want to comment is we really need as a community in Drupal, we really need a lot of, you know, um, uh, web developing agencies to come out and, you know, if it's possible, give out your approach to Drupal development. We can learn from each other. This is this is what Magic Logic does, and we'll definitely be improving on this one. But we'd really like to see how other agencies approach their development, their choices of module. I've read a lot of blogs on other companies, and uh, it has helped me uh, and my developers, uh, you know, improve their skills. Uh, so, uh, like we have. Um, you know, Drupal showcases. We could we could have you know uh, Drupal you know d developer focused um, showcases and real detailed case studies. That would be real nice. That's awesome. Um, we did have a couple of questions come in really quick. Uh, one from uh, one of our uh, participants says, "I just ran springcm.com under the uh, builtwith.com site." Um, there's a lot of other stuff running. Do you have any comments on that? Uh, could you repeat that, please? I didn't quite get it. Sure. It, it says, I just ran springcm.com under the builtwith.com site. A lot of other stuff running. Do you have any comments about that? Well, there's a lot of JavaScript running. I'll give you that. Um, there's a lot of uh, Marketo stuff happening, uh, uh, social, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, Google Analytics. Um, I mean, uh, there's a lot of other modules that we're using, uh, but we, we, are, we, we I think uh, I, I didn't quite understand. If uh, you could you could say what other those uh, other things are running, I could give a better answer. Okay, um, I'll let him respond, and then I'll take another question really yeah, quick. I definitely love to you know hear feedback. Uh, you can directly email us. Uh, at info at magiclogics.com or okay. my personal email stmelsina at magiclogics.com and I'd be really happy to respond. Great, so uh, just to make sure everyone uh, heard, it's on the slide actually right now. You're more than welcome to email Sam at info at magiclogics.com and I would just put a question for Sam in the uh, subject line and then I'm sure it could get forwarded to him. Sam, I have one last question really quick. Is there a public test server um, that I can point an under development Drupal site. Come again? Is there a public test server that someone can point an under development Drupal site? So, like, I'm yeah, assuming I a think, staging site. Yes, I think you can use Pantheon. Uh, if you've heard about it, they let you, you know, uh, developers uh, develop sites there for free. That's that's one. That's okay. one. If you want, might want to look. Okay, great. 
Um, so I think that covers our questions and answers. And, uh, you know, like Sam said, please feel free to reach out to him at uh, info at magiclogics.com. And I'm sure he's happy to follow up on some uh, pretty basic questions uh, to get those, those answers for you guys. So thank you so much, Sam and uh, Chris and Magic Logics, of course, for your expertise and time um, in this really beautiful slideshow. So um, if you could move to the next slide, that would be great. Just a quick reminder for some of us that weren't on the uh, webinar in the beginning, we have a couple of upcoming events for the Drupal Association. We have our big uh, DrupalCon in Europe, Amsterdam, coming up at the end of September, the beginning of October. And uh, the, the link is on the webinar slide deck right now. We also have our Drupal Global Training Days coming up. You can go to that site and learn more about that program. And then, of course, um, you know, our next webinars are coming up as well. Next slide, please. And just a reminder that uh, we have Drupal Association organization memberships and individual memberships. You can find out more about uh, those listed below. And of course, these help fund more scholarship grants and uh, support for our servers and our program. So thank you everyone for joining us. Just a reminder that I'll be uploading this and sending you guys an email for the recorded YouTube video. And um, we look forward to hearing you and uh, having you on our other calls. Thank you.